Shadow of the Torturer, first half of Shadow and Claw, which is the first half of uh, the Book of the New Sun. It is written by Gene Wolfe, and honestly, this is ending up to be a book that I almost didn't read, a book I almost didn't start. That is that has become my favorite book of all time, surpassing Sanderson's Stormlight Archives, uh, J uh, the Harry Potter series, and Tolkien alike. This is going to be a spoiler-free review of Shadow of the Torture, something you might be able to decide whether or not you want to start the book. But it's also going to be a what I wish I would have done before I started Shadow of the Torture and what I think would help others enjoy the Book of the New Sun a little bit more. But to start, I'm going to give you my summary of the book. And this is the summary of the book that Savarian, our main character that we follow, the summary of the story he is telling and not necessarily the entire story that Wolf is writing. And I know that sounds confusing, but stay with me. It's a coming-of-age story of a tortured apprentice being expelled from his guild for showing a prisoner the one thing that they shouldn't, which is mercy. Savarian, our tortured apprentice, then journeys away from his home and discovers that the world at large is nothing like how his home was. And even though that's my summary of the book, anybody who's read this is probably like, that doesn't even scratch the surface. And they're right, because this book has so many layers to it. In my video of my mid-year wrap-up, where I review, rate, and rank all the books I've read so far this year, I explained it by saying that this book has more layers than an ogre eating an onion. If you haven't watched that video, like and subscribe so that you can watch it after you finish this video. But the big summary is that this book is unlike anything I have ever read and has layers and depth to it that you will not get the first time you read this book through. It's a book that reads like a fantasy novel, but is pure science fiction. And a great example of this is the language that Wolf uses throughout this book, throughout his novel. He will speak of things like uh, knights, castles, and wizards when he's really referring to astronauts, rockets, and robots. He is using words familiar to the fantasy genre to describe items of the future. And I'm not going to go into details about the hints and stuff because I think every reader should have that moment where they're reading Shadow of the Torture and they come to the realization of, oh, he's not talking of, let's just throw a random word out there, dragon. He's talking about another random word, astronaut. So while the word Wolf is using is dragon, what he's actually describing in the tale is astronaut. Even the cover art to this book is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This cover, for example, done by Bruce Pennington, it is some of my favorite cover art of any book, but it is not what Wolf is describing. It is the words that Savarian is saying. The world does not look like this. Well, in some ways, but it does feel like this, but it is not this. Going back to how my summary barely scratches the surface of this novel, it's a book that at sometimes feels like it is saying very little. And yet a chapter that holds maybe 1500 words in it will really contain 15,000. It's a book that you need information from its middle and end to understand the beginning of the book. And as I start to read through Claw the Conciliator, the second half of Shadow and Claw, I'm beginning to realize that I'm even needing information from the second book to truly understand the first book. And I haven't read the, thir the third and fourth, but I imagine the further you go along this journey, the clearer the picture as a whole becomes, the clearer the story becomes. So I imagine this book gets better on its second and third reads than the first. And I honestly don't know if I'm making this book sound enjoyable at all whatsoever, but it is. It is so good. But that does bring me to my next point, which is I don't think this book is enjoyable for everyone. And I don't mean this book isn't for everyone like I think Dreams of the Dying isn't for everyone because that, that book has subject that might be inappropriate for everyone. This book isn't for everyone, as in like not everyone will appreciate what Gene Wolfe is trying to do. It's more of, it's not for everyone in a sense of pure taste and enjoyment. Not all books are universal for everybody, but there are some that hit closer to that universal mark, like Stormlight or Harry Potter or Chronicles of Narnia. 
this book is not in that spectrum. It is a book that I think anybody who truly enjoys it will acknowledge that, hey, not everybody's gonna like this. It's not for everybody. But for those who do enjoy it, it shakes the very foundation of what you consider a good book. Like it makes you rethink everything. In fact, for those of you that follow the channel and know that like I want to write a fantasy book, like I am actively working towards writing a fantasy novel, it's helped me realize something about writing and reading books. It helped me realize that the epicness of a book, how much you like a book, is like directly proportional to the hours spent outside of actually reading the book that you spend thinking about it, researching it, looking and discussing that book. Because I'll tell you what, like after finishing Shadow of the Torture, I have spent more time listening to things about Shadow of the Torture than I actually did listening to Shadow of the Torture. It's wild. And I'm not the first one to discover this law. Most of the great writers have discovered this and actually applied this to their world. Sanderson does this in many ways, most notably with like Hoyd and the World Hoppers, in which there's a story going on in the background that you don't know is there, that you actively have to look at or have other reading material to truly understand. Other series do too, like the Band Trilogy does this in some effect, the First Law does this in some effect, but none of these, including Sanderson, does this to the level uh, that Gene Wolfe does in this book, the, the entire Book of the New Sun, I'll go to say, even though I haven't read all of the Book of the New Sun at this point. So I've given you a summary and told you a little bit about what to expect from this book, but now I want to tell you what I think you should know before starting this book. I did not do these things before I started my initial read and I enjoyed it immensely. It is my favorite book of all time now. It became my favorite book of all time without doing these things. So you don't have to do them. But I think if I would have done these, I would have enjoyed the book that much better. This book is so deep and so dense that you will miss 95% of the story being told if you just read it like I did. The best way to do to read this book, in my opinion, is probably to start listening to a podca podcast called Alzabo Soup right when you get to the part where Savarian is expelled from the Torturer's Guild. Um, start with the first podcast on the episode um, and then kind of listen to that while you're continuing through the book of Shadow of the Torture. Alzabo Soup is essentially a podcast that deep dives into each chapter of Shadow of the Torture and discusses all the things that you've probably missed. And it is so much fun to see what you actually pick up on and see because some of the stuff you're like, I saw that, I, I noticed that, I realized that, like, ah, yes. And then other things you're like, I could have spent a thousand years reading this book and looking stuff up and I would have never made that connection. And like that is so much fun. I've only listened to a few episodes of this podcast at this point, but I can tell you that I thoroughly enjoy every second of it and I wish I would have been listening to this. Um, not read a chapter, then listen to the breakdown, the podcast breakdown, but if I was a third of the way in the, of the book, I wish I would have started listening to the first one and then maybe finishing up the second and while I'm working through that first third of the podcast. Another resource is, I think it's Media's Death Cults, A Shadow of the Torturer Explained, which features Al, Al Zabo Soup on this discussion. But I would say that video is for people who have finished the book and want to sample if they want to listen to or devote time to the Alzabo Soup podcast. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with reading it all the way through without any of the supplemental information because I did that and I thoroughly enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but I do think I would have enjoyed it even more if I had done this. In conclusion, Shadow of the Torture is a science fiction book that reads like a fantasy. It has more layers than an ogre eating onions. I'm very proud of that analogy, very proud. And has become my favorite book of all time. This book is getting the highest five out of five stars and that brings this review to its end. Um, like and subscribe to get notified when the next video drops. And until next time, I hope you're out there uh, exploring cool new worlds and reading great new books. And I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.